What is up you guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a bit of an updated tanning routine. Right now, I have zero tan on my body and I've noticed that my natural tan is starting to fade. So I was like, Steph, it's about time you slide yourself in some thick brown foam. So today, that is exactly what I'm gonna be doing. I'm basically gonna be showing you guys the products that I use whenever I do tan, how I tan, any tips and tricks that I've learned along the way because I have had many, many tanning mistakes in the past and I feel like I've kind of nailed my own little tanning routine. So yeah, let's do it. Let's get naked and let's get tanned. All right, so like I said, I don't have any tan on me right now. This is just kind of like my natural tan that I've gotten over the past few months, but it is starting to fade. So I wanna get myself a lot more brown. So basically I've just had a shower or about half an hour ago, so I'm completely clean. Haven't put any moisturizer on or anything like that. I definitely could do with shaving my legs, but one thing I never ever do before tanning is shave my legs or like any part of my body, purely because if you shave your legs, you're opening up the little hair follicle things and then the tan can get inside and it means you can get those dark bumps, which we don't want. So if you need to shave your legs, wait till after you tan or maybe do it like the day before or something like that. So basically first step is to clean your body. No moisturizer, no shaving your legs. You wanna be clean and you wanna be hairy. Cool. Another little thing you could do and I should do, but I rarely do, is do a little bit of exfoliating. I usually tend to prefer something like this. As you can see, this one's brand new. This is the Tan Removing and Skin Polishing Glove from Loving Tan. I'm gonna open this up because I'm probably gonna have to use this uh, when I take my tan off. But this, when we take the little, little cardboard out, this is just like this kind of like really rough exfoliating glove. You don't have to get this one. This is the best one I've come across, um, but you can still use like the little exfoliating gloves that you can get in like Wilkinson's, Asda, that kind of thing. But this is really, really good for exfoliating and also taking off your tan, but we'll get onto that later. So if you can, do exfoliate a little bit because obviously it means that your skin will be a lot smoother. You won't get any dry patches or anything like that. I rarely do it, but I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel, what can I say? So next up is something that I always, always do before I tan, and I find this makes a world of a difference with how my tan actually looks. So I'm just using a body butter here from the body shop. This one is the Plant Kisses Moringa Softening Body Butter, but I find that generally any kind of body butter or moisturizer works. Oh, it smells so good. So basically the reason we haven't put any moisturizer on yet is because generally if you put moisturizer on underneath a tan, it kind of won't make the tan work as well. It might come off lighter, it might not adhere to the skin properly. When it comes to dry patches like elbows, knees, ankles, any dry patch you kind of have, moisturize the crap out of it. So what I'm gonna do is just take some of this, and I'm basically gonna put this in any areas that I find that tan generally sticks to. Usually, like if you haven't tanned before, the general areas are like your elbows. I usually put a little bit in here as well, just to kind of like smooth the base out. Think of it as like a primer, you know? When you put a primer on your skin, it smooths it out. Think of this as your primer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm then actually gonna take some and put some in my armpits because I often find that obviously again from like shaving or I personally epilate, sometimes your armpits can look a little bit darker than the rest of your body and I don't find that looks amazing. So I do like to put a little bit of moisturizer under my armpits and just kind of blend that out a little bit. I'll then do the same on my knees. This is me moisturizing my knee and also on my ankles. And I also like to take a bit and put some on my feet as well because I don't want my feet to look too dark. Again, I find that fake tan can like go super intense on my feet and my hands. So if I put some of this on my feet, it won't be as dark. And then just gonna pop some on my hands as well, again, because obviously your hands can be a lot drier than the rest of your skin sometimes. Just kind of smooths them out a little bit. So I just like to blend that down my wrist a little bit, just so you don't have like the obvious wrist line. And then I'm also gonna moisturize my face as well because I do like to use tan on my face. I know not everyone does, and I have another product that I can show you guys in a minute, but I personally find that the fake tan that I use works fine on my face. So I'm just gonna take some of my NARS moisturizer here. I'm just gonna pop that all over my skin and also down my neck a little bit as well. Also on my ears. Just again, anywhere where you kind of get like telltale signs of wearing fake tan. All right, all right, all right. So then what I'm gonna do, even though I already have my hair up, I do have these little guys, which I don't wanna get tan in. Like I didn't realize this, when I went lighter with my hair, fake tan stains blonder hair. So if you have lighter hair or maybe even just hair in general, it's better to be safe than sorry. Get your hair out your face because I have gotten tan in my hair before and it is a bitch to get out, so. I'm just gonna take my hair down. I have no idea what my hair looks like right now. So I'm just gonna chuck my hair up and then just gonna pop my hair up in a headband like that. So my hair is pretty much completely out of my face, out of my neck. Um, 
It's just out of the way, basically, so we don't get any tan in it. So then once you've done all that prepping, it's time to get tanned. So, yoink. I get a ton of questions, literally like probably at once in every single video, I get questions about what tan I use, and it is literally always, always loving tan. Like I've tried other tans, and just nothing quite compares. Nothing compares. Sorry, I've had three coffees this morning. So I always, always use the Deluxe Bronzing Mousse. They also have an express one, which I think takes like half the time, so I use that whenever I'm in a rush. We've got the dark one, which to be honest, I use probably the most, and then I also have the ultra dark when I'm feeling ultra pale and I want to be ultra dark but yeah love those two not gonna lie this stuff is expensive like I'm just gonna be completely honest with you guys this is not cheap in fact I think it's one of the more expensive tans I've come across but it is worth every single penny and this lasts me like I don't know I want to say maybe like seven to ten like full body uses so it does last me a few months which is good so yeah I literally swear by this stuff so I'm just gonna give it a shake I'm gonna use the dark one today because obviously I do still have a little bit of tan on my skin from my holiday. And then when it comes to applying my tan, I always use kind of like a more velvety mitt. I find they work a whole lot better. You can still obviously use more of like a sponge mitt and it does still look really nice. But if you can get your hands on like a velvety one, then it'll just look so much better. It applies so much more evenly. This one here is by Loving Tan. This video is not sponsored, I promise. They do send me a few bits every once in a while, but it is by far my favorite because it's so like, I don't know, it's so thick. But Velvetan also do one and, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bronzy also do one, which is really, really good. As you can see, this one looks a little bit like another mitt. It has two different sides. And the idea with this one, because I do get a few questions about how I tan my back, I can like, I can actually kind of reach every area I need to reach. Uh, but when it comes to tanning your back, this is really good. Loving Tan also do like a kind of stick spongy mitt thing. Both of them work really, really well. This one, you generally just put like a bit of your tanning foam on there and go. So if you struggle when it comes to tanning your back, this one here is a really good option because obviously it is velvety like the Loving Tan one, but it is a bit longer so you can do your back as well. So generally what I do is I take this is a brand new one. I take, I don't know, around about this much on my mitt to start off with. And I'm just gonna try and not have like a nip slip live on camera here. Stay there, boobies, stay there. So I'm just gonna start with my arms. And one of the reasons why I love Loving Tan so much is because you can be really bad at applying this stuff, but it like never looks streaky. I've applied this when I was drunk. I've applied this just really, really badly with like a mitt that I did not like and it just, it just never goes on streaky. Even if you feel like it maybe looks a bit streaky when you first put it on, when you wash it off afterwards, it just, it just ends up looking really, really flawless. So that's another reason why I love it. Oh, just seeing my arm a little bit darker makes me so much happier instantly. It's been a while, fake tan, it's been a while. I'm just gonna blend that in. I basically just kind of do like circular motions almost. So obviously it's all well and good me saying how great Loving Tan is, but I get it. If you don't wanna spend all that money on a bottle of brown foam. Um, other tans that I've tried that are good is U Tan and Tone, San Maurice, San Moritz. I don't really know how to say that brand, um, but that's probably like the closest tan I found to Loving Tan on a budget. It's not as good and it doesn't smell as good, but it is still a really, really nice tan. And I think they do like an ultra dark one now as well. Sandra Pay is really good. Um, Sunkist actually do really, really nice tans. I feel like when I was younger, fake tans were always, like without a doubt, they were always orange. You could buy the most expensive tan out there and it would just, you'd still end up looking like Donald Trump. But now I feel like because tanning is so popular, like so many brands just, they just nail it with fake tan. I'm just gonna go over my hands with whatever is left on my sponge. I literally just like hold my hand like that, do a couple of swipes, and it just lightly kind of dust over the rest of my hand. I do a tiny little bit on the palm of my hand. So I don't know if you guys can see, but generally Loving Tan is a little bit more olive than most other tans, which is why I like it so much. Um, like I said, San Maurice is also another kind of olivey color. Generally for me personally, because I do lean slightly more to like a warm, neutral undertone, I find the olives look a lot better on me. It does look a lot more natural. So that's one arm done. And obviously this will develop over the course of like six hours, but even then you can see, I just love it. I literally, I love being tanned. Try not to nip slip, try not to nip slip. But then again, same on the other side. Generally, I feel like, I feel like I work in kind of an odd order. Like I start with my arms, then I usually go down to my legs, then I tend to do like my stomach and my boobs and my back and my bum. 
And then after that, I'll kind of do like my chest, work it up to my neck a little bit, and then my face, my hands, my feet. Um, does anyone else do that? What order do you do your tan in? Let me know. Oh, so bronzy. I love it so much. I have missed being tanned. Just gonna get right on in those pits. Stay there, nipple. Stay there. Other questions I've had about tanning is about how to maintain it. So generally what I like to do, I find this tan, by the way, lasts between like five to seven days, depending on what you're doing, depending on how you look after it. But to extend your tan a little bit longer, use a gradual tanner like three days in to when you've applied your tan. I just find it keeps your tan looking a lot more kind of fresh. It doesn't look flaky or anything like that. You know what, I'm gonna break my usual routine and I'm gonna tan my chest now. So um, yeah, what I tend to find works is using like a gradual tanner or something, maybe like halfway through the week of you being tanned. I feel like all I do these days is like get half naked for you guys on camera. You're both welcome and I'm sorry. But yeah, I find generally using a gradual tanner a few days into applying your fake tan will kind of help to maintain it or just making sure you moisturize your skin. You can also use that little like moisturizing glove as well or like one of those moisturizing mitts to kind of take off any excess tan so you get like naturally lighter throughout the week so you're not looking flaky or anything. Don't mind me, just um, nothing to see here, boys. Nothing to see here. So like I was saying, like here, for example, it looks a little bit patchy on me right now. I find my chest always tends to look a little bit more patchy than anything else. But when you actually wash it off a few hours later, that won't show up or anything like that. Like any patchiness will completely go. All right, the boobs are officially browned. So then with whatever is kind of left on my mitt, I'm just gonna apply to my face. Also just going down my neck and kind of like around my shoulders. Do my little ears a little bit. So then when it comes to my back, like I said, I'm I'm a freak, so I can kind of like reach anywhere I need to. So if you don't have one of those funky mitts, either get like boyfriend, family member, friend, neighbor, granddad, whoever to kind of tan your back for you. Or what I like to do is basically just kind of reach up and around. And then when I need to get a little bit higher, I just kind of do that. Like it's a little bit awkward, but it does the job and you do get like a decent amount of control from it, just like that. So like, it is doable, if you can reach around to your back then you can do it. Or what I'll quickly do is show you guys how this bad boy works. So I'm going to take a little bronzy mitt thing and take some of this. And I like to kind of like, pad it in a little bit. Then, you know, you just kind of like, just do that and do a little wiggle. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ta-da! And you can just kind of... Do it like that as well. And when it comes to like your belly button, because you don't really want too much tan like in your belly button, I just like go over the top and and lightly, you know, just lightly give it a little wiggle. I'm not going like right on in there. I'm not like full on like loading up my belly button with tan, but I don't want it to look too obviously pale, but I don't want it to look too obviously dark if that makes sense. So I just kind of like just do a little bit of that. Little bit of this, little bit of that. All right, so that's most of my body done, and I know I seem to share a lot of myself with you guys lately, but don't think I'm quite ready to tan my bare ass on camera, so if you don't mind, I'm gonna go off camera, tan my bootay, and I will check back with you in a second. All right, guys, so tanning is done, and as you can see, I have just put on a onesie. That is something that I also like to do, especially if I'm sleeping in my tan, because, I mean, let's face it, if you've got light colored sheets or if you've got bed sheets in general, then they stain like a bitch when it comes to fake tanning. So if I can, if it's not too hot in bed, then I always try and wear like a onesie or pajamas or something just to make sure that my tan doesn't stain the sheets as much. I also went ahead and washed my hands after tanning as well because obviously you don't want to get like orange palms or anything like that. I just tend to wash my hands with just like regular hand soap and kind of just work it in between my fingers as well just so that doesn't get too dark. And even though you guys did already see me fake tan my face, I am just going to show you another product that I really like to use. This one is from U Tan and Tone. It's the coconut tanning water and this is basically just a facial tanner and let me just make sure we're still spraying. So as you can see it just comes out like a spray and this is really good for example if you kind of want to top up your face tan throughout the week and generally speaking your body tan will last a lot longer than your facial tanner will so I just like to reapply this throughout the week so all I literally do is go boom, boom, Boom. Just let that kind of like settle on my skin. Again, if you do have lighter hair, then try and make sure you kind of keep your hair back when you use that because if it does get on your hair after a while, it can kind of turn your hair to look a little bit more like warm, a little bit more orangey. So keep your hair back and you'll be all good. But yeah, that's pretty much the hard bit done. So now what I'm gonna do is probably go upstairs, do some editing, and I will check back with you in around about six hours. 
All right, guys, so it's been around six or I'd say probably six or seven hours now. So this is pretty much as dark as I'm going to get. So as you can see, it's not like it's not insanely dark. It definitely you can definitely tell I've got some tan on, but it's not like crazy, crazy dark. So I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So now all that's left to do is to wash this tan off. Now, another little tip from me is that instead of using hot water, I try try because in winter this is a little bit of a pain in the ass but i try and use as cold of water as i can just because if you think about it when you use hot water it opens up your pores so it's going to let a lot more of the tan kind of escape from your pores if you use cold water it kind of keeps your tan locked in a little bit better so that's a little tip from me if you want to keep your tan on because i know it's like the biggest pain in the ass when you have like really nice tan on and you love the color of it and then you take a shower and you just literally see it all go down the drain so Try and use the coldest water you can physically handle and it should stay on for longer. So now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead, hop off camera, get naked and go and shower this off. All right, so I'm back and I am nice and cleansed. So also one thing I didn't mention when I have my very cold shower is I don't really scrub myself too much. I usually use one of those like poof things. I'll try and like put a picture of them on screen now, but I always use them when I shower, but when I first apply my tan, I do not use them because I don't want to take off too much tan from my body. Also, when I do get out of the shower, when I am drying myself, I don't tend to like rub myself with a towel or anything like that again, because I don't want to take off the tan too much. So what I do just tend to do is just like, pat myself dry and it works fine. So this is how my tan is looking now and this will generally be how it looks for at least around five days or so and then it'll maybe start to fade a little bit. Like I said at the start to maintain my tan, I do just use like a gradual tan or something over the top. So maybe from like the third day or so, I'll start applying a gradual tanner every day or every other day, depends on what I kind of need. And then when it comes to actually removing my tan because I do get a lot of questions about how I remove it because I'm not gonna lie, loving tan isn't the easiest thing to remove. I always make sure to use, it's either the um, Sam Moritz tan remover thing or the Bondi Sands tan remover. I don't have any of them on me right now, which reminds me I definitely need to get some for next week. But I'll put pictures of both of them on screen now. The Bondi Sands one is more expensive. I actually kind of prefer the Sam Moritz one because it smells nicer and it's cheaper, so if you can get your hands on that one, then I definitely recommend that. But basically all you really do with that is when your tan is kind of ready to come off and you'll be able to tell when because if you basically get out of the shower and start rubbing your skin and you'll find that sometimes your skin can kind of like look like it's flaking off almost and that's generally when I know that my tan is well and done. So all I'll do then is before my next shower, what I'll do is just cover myself in the foam. It kind of comes out like a shaving foam. I just slather myself in it and then you kind of leave it to set for around about five to 10 minutes and it just goes really kind of sticky then you get in the shower and what I do I don't know where I put it wait wait then I take this guy again so my little scrubby mitt and all I do is I wet this slightly so it's not like soaking wet but so it's just kind of like damp I guess and I'll rub this on my skin and you will literally be able to see like the brown tan just like peeling off your skin almost. It's kind of gross, but also very, very satisfying. And I'll generally just do that, focus mostly again on like the dry patches of my skin because I do find that say for example, tan doesn't ever really go like patchy or anything up here. If it's gonna go patchy, it will generally be on my elbows, on the inside of my arms, maybe on my chest or something. So I do focus mostly on those areas. I'll then get out of the shower and start the whole process once again. So guys, I really hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you did in the comment section down below and also let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up because that helps me out a lot. Obviously, if you have any other questions or anything like that, then feel free to ask them in the comments. You guys know I always try and get back to as many of you as possible. So if you have any burning questions, let me know. I'll get around to answering them. Don't forget, if you do want to see more of this face, then make sure you follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, which you can find just up here. Also subscribe if you do want to see more of me, because as you all know, I upload all the damn time. But apart from that, that's it from me. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.